Hey everybody, one another episode of Throwback Thursday, let's play. Today we're taking a look at War Machine Prime First Edition. The game that started it all back in 2002. Um, this game was pre-released at Gen Con and 20 years later, I think it's mark on the miniature wargaming landscape, especially the competitive landscape, cannot be overstated. Now you can check out my rulebook review of this rulebook, uh, PIP1001, it's almost like RTB01 for the Privateer Press lineup. Uh, and today I'm gonna be joined by Jordan as we throw down with the original two metal battle boxes for Menoth and Signar and show off the game in all of its glory black and white cards and all, as it would have been played basically after that Gen Con in 2002, 20 years ago, uh, between battle boxes. So I'll show you the table, I'll show you the forces, and we'll get this underway. And if you want to check out the review, you can open the cards and watch the flip through and sort of commentary on the rule book. Here ready to rock and roll is my Mark I battle box collection for Menoth. It's Krios, a Crusader, a Repenter, and a Revenger. Um, two light warjacks and a heavy warjack was kind of the mix for these early battle boxes with the exception of Cater that came with two heavies instead. Um, and you had a fairly toolboxy warcaster. You can see I did paint this back in 2002 um, when they first came out. So this is my Krios. He's fairly space marine with this cool Popat and he's seen some wear and tear over the years since then. But this was the original um, Menoth warcaster that I painted. Here's my Revenger. I was very into mud and battle damage back then. Uh, my Repenter with his flamethrower. Not the best battle box warjack, but he had his uses. And the Crusader, a meat and potatoes heavy with a big flaming mace who came into his own later on in third and second edition, <laughs> uh, Mark II and Mark III. And your black and white cards. Um, and the first thing you'll probably notice is the differences like the point value. So for instance, um, when you flip these guys over, they gave out victory points based on their unit types. You got five victory points if you killed Krios, although you typically ended the game if you killed him. His field allowance was, he was a caster, so one, and his point cost was six, sorry, 84 points. 64 points. You actually spent points on these guys. There was no dodging, uh, yeah, 64 points. No dodging paying points for your Warcaster. Um, 93 points, 76 points, and 76 points for the two, which means overall most of the battle boxes are about the same here. You're looking at 152, about 300 points uh, overall for the cost of the box. Uh, you had your spell list in the back, it's all pretty familiar, even in black and white. Your health track, um, your feet, I mean, that's rats, all enemy models within Krios' control are knocked down. Your spell breakers, special rules like dispel and reach, so two inch reach, two inch melee range, and dispel all upkeep spells on a target expire when hit by a spell breaker. He had an anti magic pulse, all upkeep spells in his uh, control area expire. Cleansing fire, a massive blast of flames for four focus, range eight, AoE four, and power 14, uh, and his fire and a critical hit which is still any doubles. Immolation for two, eight inch uh, range and damage 12. Again, causes fire and a critical hit. Lamentation, this is his amazing upkeep spell. Enemy Warcasters and AoE pay double to cast or upkeep spells. Basically, he had a no magic um, ability when you were in his control range. And he had one of the larger control ranges for the first Warcasters. Protection of Minoth, plus two death and armor on somebody for upkeep. Retribution, if target Warjack's damaged, the attacker suffers an equal damage roll, then the spell expires. And Ward, target Warjack may not be targeted by enemy spells. So he's a pretty great battle box caster because he jacked up his war jacks, made them really good. I uh, Revenger, he had a shield, so his armor went up to 19 with his shield. You can see the shield bonus was actually added right there. Uh, he had a power 13 with reach on his um, uh, halberd with powerful charge, plus two its charge attack roll. And then repel, if you hit him, you got pushed back an inch. So all those melee range one guys would get driven back when he was being fought. He also had an arc node, so you could throw immolates through him if you needed to. And then the Crusader with his awesome um, power 18 mace with crit fire. Uh, he had lots of damage boxes, but armor 19, def 10, really easy to hit. And only Matt 5, he was bad at hitting things. Because basically they assumed that you're going to have the choir, which was a later expansion for them, to up their mats. So they were very bad at hitting things that when they weren't boosting. The flamethrower is a spray template. I believe it was spray 8. No special rules there, but it did... Um, POW 12, didn't cause fire. Bone of contention in the original release. No fire on his flamethrower, which you would have thought would. This was fixed in Redux, but uh, yeah, it was kind of, a, kind of a bone of contention. I got some other accessories here from the same era. My Gale Force 9 token set. G G Force 9 did a very cool set of first edition tokens for the, the different Warcasters. This one was specifically for Krios, 
I think you also got tokens uh, that you could expand it with. So this was basically for the battle box. You can see the picture of it on the front. But you can get extra tokens, which I expanded for uh, Severius and um, the Hyrule Claimer, I think it was. And the measuring tokens, I didn't even open these. I've had these for years. But a measuring token set um, for quick measurements and for your blast templates and stuff too. And then I even have some rock markers that we'll use today for the Crusader and the lights. If somebody gets destroyed, they leave a patch of difficult terrain. And here's Jordan Signar, a starter set. This is the original Mark I, led by Commander oh, Coleman Striker. Look at him right here with his sword and his big blowed out hair. Look at that. <laughs> um, so now you've got a uh, disruptor pistol, which is actually really cool. You can't allocate po uh, focus to guys who get disrupted. His sword also disrupts. Absolutely. Um, he's got a bit smaller damage grid at 17, I think. Um, and then invincibility is his feet for plus five armor for Signar models in this control. It's everybody, not just his battle group. Arcane Blast costs three range 10. It's funny because I have Immolation, which is like a in-between. It's cheaper, but lower damage and lower range. Uh, you've got Arcane Bolt, which is basically the same as Immolation. Costs two, but range 12. Less damage, but longer range. Arcane Shield, uh, you get Magical Barrier, adding plus three armor. That's an upkeep spell. Blur, plus three death against range attacks. And then Earthquake, everybody's knocked down. Costs three, and he's only got six focus, but range 10 and a five inch AOE. And then Snipe, the Charger loves Snipe. Increase the uh, range weapons range by one inch per focus point spent. So you can, it's up the, oh, oh. The, like the current Snipe, yeah, it's two for four inches. This one's just, you jack it up as far as you want. You can give it plus six inches of range. Point. Yeah. Interesting. Very, very different. Oh, is it not upkeep anymore? Then? It's not an upkeep either. No, you just do it once. Yeah, Snipe's oh, very yeah, different. Up. Oh, it is upkeep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So once you, if you just blow it all in the first turn to add him like plus six, then he keeps it for one. Interesting. At the end of all that, yep. Yeah. Uh, the Charger's got a double tap gun, ready to fire two, pow 12, 12 inch range. The Battle Hammer's only pow 12. That's really it. Nothing special other than that. You got a Arc Knight over here in the Lancer, though. He's got a shock field. If you hit him, you take a damage to your Cortex, which sucks. Um, automatically, and then you mark it before you make the damage roll. And then his War Spirit set defense, uh, which means plus two death when he gets charged, and reach for two inch melee. This shield gives him an armor of 18, uh, which is nice pretty when he's when he's fighting. Yeah, and he's pretty respectable defense 13 as well. Both your lights are pretty hard to hit. You're heavy even, defense 12, mine's only defense 10. And and you get a mat of chuck, chuck it. Well, they built all the Minoth War Jacks with the idea that the choir's there, so my mat's only five. Oh. <laughs> and mat five, round four. Yeah, we don't fight so good. Um, you have crit knockdown on your hammer, which is powerful strength 18, just like my mace. But you also have tremor, a star attack. Uh, you get to roll a dice and add the pow. And you compare, sorry, two dice and add the pow. Uh, you compare this to the defense of every model within two, and then everyone's knocked down if it equals or exceeds their defense. So my defense 10 guy on a three plus on 2d6 gets knocked down if you make your star attack. Uh, does no damage and can't be boosted, but is very, very good at knocking in a whole bunch of guys within two of him. And then you go in and spend focus for the kill because you auto hit in melee. Uh, you do only have a half inch range though right now because this is an early edition of the game. So unless you have reach for two inches of range, you have a half an inch engagement on everybody. Uh, Lancer's got reach. He's got reach. He's got a two inch reach, but it's a bit shorter. The heavies in Mark Three have a one inch reach when they can reach out because their arms are really long, but it's a bit shorter uh, reach in Mark One. Bearing for war, the encounter level we're playing is a duel. It's up to 350 points. We're playing roughly 300 each. Plays about 30 minutes, and it's when two warcasters cross paths in the, the wastes. So for two player games in a typical game of War Machine, two players are fighting across a four x four playing surface, and we've set up our battlefield and terrain here, the ruins of this village we've encountered ourselves in. We each roll a d6, the highest uh, roller chooses any player, including themselves, to be the first player. Once established, the turnover remains the same for the rest of the game. The players then deploy their armies, um, deploying up to 10 inches out from a table edge. Uh, deploy troops so that they are um, all their troopers are at least in skirmish formation or closer. The second player then deploys all their forces. Right, so I get to use my sweet, sweet, ancient Gale Force 9 first edition token set, which actually came with uh, tokens for all the spells in the battle box. Uh, so we'll dice off right now for who's first and second player. I got a two. Yeah! You got a six. Yes. Well, with authority, you can choose who goes first and who goes second. Uh, you can go... It's usually actually better to make first? me go first, yeah, because yeah, I have to move up and then you get to respond. Yeah, it's a pretty short-range game, so I can respond. And in this edition, it's just 10 inch deployments. It's not like you're losing deployment for going yeah. second. So, Krios and his battle group, we got the um, Crusader, the uh, Retributor, no, not Rep Repenter, sorry, and the Revenger. The Repenter over here, the Revenger, and the uh, Crusader ready to rock and roll. Krios in the middle with the seven focus. And then you get to deploy opposite. Now, this is a duel, which means when one Warcaster dies, the remaining uh, machines all go inert and you add up victory points. 
Now, it's probably not gonna matter because even though the um, two Warcasts are worth five victory points each on their cards, you get the remaining victory points for these guys going in hurt. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, it'd be 12 victory points as soon as you kill one of the Warcasters. All right, so you deploy up to 10. And then I have the first turn. So first turn, so starting with the maintenance phase, I gain all my focus up to my focus stat, which is seven, I get to apply it. So I'm gonna wanna run, which means I'm gonna start handing out focus like crazy. And then I'll keep four for Krios himself. Now, in later editions, you would gain free focus automatically for your active cortexes. I don't get that. However, start with your full focus. I was gonna uh, say, I start camp. on that's turn right. one still, right? That's right, and then you regain it at the start of your turn as well. We, st we start with our full focus, which means you're not naked for focus, because yeah. you add focus to your armor stat. In this edition of the game, so you are still super armory, armor, even though you haven't had an activation 20. yet. Yeah, armor 20 is pretty good. Actually, 21. Pretty good. All right, so now my control radius is 14 inches, which is lots. It's way up to here because I have a um, big giant control check. In this edition, the only thing you can pre measure is control. There's no pre measure mode otherwise, although in later editions, of course, that would become a thing. So I'm going to start with uh, this big guy, and he's going to run. He's movement four, so he only runs eight inches, and that'll cost him his focus. My Apprentice, who's an Arc node, which is handy because he'll be able to help me channel my spells, is also going to run. Now he'll run 10 because he's speed 5. So he's going to go 8. And then 2 more just to keep up with this buddy. Last but not least, the Repenter will run 10 up behind this building for his focus. Now this gets to go and he's going to cast some spells. We'd like to not die. So the first thing we're going to cast is we're going to cast... Oh, let's say protection of Minoth. And we're going to use that to make our Crusader not as crap uh, as he otherwise is. Because I don't have a choir, which is a unit that's also in first edition, um, because this is a battle box game. So for two, I gain protection of Minoth. He's plus two defense and plus two armor. So he becomes armor 21, defense 12. Oh. So he's a bit harder to, to hit and knock Whoa. down. A handy little token for that. That cost me two. And then I can also cast Lamentation, and this is an important one for later because I'm going to upkeep it. Everyone within my controls, who's an enemy uh, Warcaster, has to double their casting cost for spells and for upkeeps. And now, this was banned in later editions. You could charge something you could see for extra movement and your activation. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to walk. It was a cheeky maneuver that everybody did. Because you could always declare a charge and just fail it because you didn't pre-measure your charges in this edition of the game. Um, and that meant that you would gain an extra three inches of movement. I'm just going to walk instead, though. Because I don't want to get snipe murdered by that charger because I don't have any armor on me right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to walk over and try not to die. Signar turn one, which means your six yet comes back and you can allocate okay. as you like to your warjacks. Um... I might like not allocate actually and throw a bunch of spells out that you can have yeah. next turn that's yeah, not a terrible idea yep yeah. it's funny the battle box games were all very like you kind of played chicken for a minute yeah. and the, for that reason they ended up throwing a thing called kill box into later editions of the scenario sets where you couldn't sit in your deployment zone or you would lose. You start to give up victory points for sitting back home. But in this edition of the game, the original one, it was all kind of a game of chicken until somebody committed. Ooh. So ac activation phase then, you're sitting yeah. on six focus. Uh, I just pause for because I remember how to play this game. Okay. It's a uh, movement and a combat action, right? I can cast spells at will. At right? will, during his activation, yeah. During Striker. Oh, and four. himself with that sweet yeah. disruption pistol. So he's going to spend four on it? Yeah. Whoa, so he's got a plus four inch range, but it upkeeps for one, because these are the weird first edition rules where it doesn't say it doesn't. So he's getting four extra inches of range on his 12 inch range yeah, disruption like pistol. Stack of things under it. So Sounds good, four. yep. Two left. And then I'm going to throw Arcane Shield on... Smart. Everybody can only have one upkeep spell on them, yeah. so it's striking to put on one of the words. No, no, I'm just deciding it. between the Ironclad and, Iron the... and the Lancer. Got it. Who wants to be extra tough, and I think it makes sense to throw it on the heavy so that he is extra super armory. Heavy. Sweet. Striker move. is going to move. He can walk six, I think. He's a bit faster yeah, than I am. Is he speed six? He might yeah. be, yeah. Signar is all kinds of six. Yeah, you guys, are, you guys are way faster than us. Our, our armor's not powered by anything except our belief that it works. So we don't walk as fast as you do. We're going to, like, <laughs> stroll forward, though, because we've got hella range right now. Perfect. I and shoot your... So you can check your control. You can't check your range until you come into it, yeah, which is 12. Do you think that's 16 with plus four? It's close. No, I, I'm only range 10 to start. So I only oh, 10 to start. So you'd be 14. Got it. So now I'm just going to chill. I Sweet. mean, there's no point really to totally range you out here. This is true. Uh, boom. 
Okay, cool. We're just going to chill there. Uh, and then the Iron Cloud is going to move up five. Can't run because he's not got any focus, but he can take a walk. And everybody's actually relatively quick. These guys walk six. Speed. Your lights have, like, speedy legs. He'll uh, probably not be able to shoot either. So we'll I mean, you can check and then just not do it anyway. <laughs> 12 we'll range. Take a wild shot at the heavy. Go for it. 12 inch range? No, just no out. We'll advance for six. Be ready to arc some nodes. All right, turn one complete. Everybody's out of focus, but all of our spells are up now, which is nice. Turn two, and it's time to advance. All right, wow, I got seven focus. So what do I want to do? I want to upkeep my two spells, so Lamentation and Protection of me. I think I get upkeeped. And that puts me on five, which is fine by me. Uh, I'm going to start... I think we're just happy to walk now, because we're pretty close. Five feels like a good idea. And we're going to begin the, the walk to freedom. Uh, so we're going to go with the heavy. He's just going to walk four under protection. If you like, if you want to disrupt me, go for it. <laughs> then we're going to go with the lancer. And he's going to walk his five. Staying out of the woods because it's difficult terrain. Hunter's going to walk up. And he's going to walk five as well. Just getting in the war because you're not quite in charge range. You only charge eight. Uh, and then I think I just run. Yeah, we're just gonna run. It'll under activation. Uh, we could arc a shot first if we wanted to. Let's can you arc. Run and cast? I can move. I can walk and cast, or I can cast before I run. Yeah. Can you? I don't think you can cast and then run, unless that's. A you can declare a charge that a range and then and then do it. I don't actually. I might not be able to run and do it, but I'm just gonna walk then if I if I can't do that. So I'm gonna shoot. I think some cleansing fire. No, nope. immolation. We're gonna throw an immolation because it. Oh, they're only eight inch range. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do absolutely none of that and we're gonna run to make sure you're in our control so I can run 10 and I want to be out of range of your guns and in cover but make sure you're in 14 of me so I'm gonna run to here lamentation I'm gonna camp and then I'm gonna check my control you're stuck in my control for some sweet upkeep shenanigans but I'm just gonna camp my five focus and lock all this stuff down so it's your turn two now so upkeeps will cost two instead of one if you want to keep either of them we'll up. We'll just keep the snipe. Smart, so it's going to cost you two, so you got four remaining. Yes. Any other allocation? Uh, we're going to give one to the Lancer. And... You need to s spend focus still to fire your second shot in this edition. If you have more than one rate yes. of fire, yeah. So we're going to give one to our friend Mr. Charger. Oh, you're, you can fire twice with his rate of fire, too. Oh, no, you no, buy the second one. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You buy the second one. Because uh, you, you just need three to do it. That's full, right. Full Charger fun full time. Full Charger murder Yeah, full, full Charger murder time. Can't do the two. Yeah. All right. And we're going to do some stuff. Activation phase. Yes. We'll start with uh, our friend Mr. Charger. He's going to advance. I remember, yeah, I think you can still forfeit your movement to aim in this. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about your job. Okay. That's true. No, I don't, I don't have very good defense. <laughs> true story. All right, he's going to walk up. Advance, and we're going to target you with our dual cannon. I'm remembering things. Yes, yeah, so I range. To anyways. All right, I've got range. Uh, we're going to fire. Okay, so the Repenter has a defense of 12 oh, that's and an armor of 17. Oh. He's very slow, but he's not that yeah. easy to hit. So I think your rat is five or six. Six, six that's right. Wait, actually, I should check these things. That's true. No, chargers are only five. There you go. Finish. So it's a seven to hit. So it's average dice. You could boost. You have one focus uh, on you. I'm just going to do the boost for the powerful attack. Go for it. And this boosts both. Both, yes. That's right. So we'll. Boost in! All right, so extra dice. Looking for a seven. Cranks uh, it, and it's a critical. Do you have a critical effect? I do not. Okay. And then it's boosted damage as well. So I am armor seventeen. Your power twelve. So minus five to this roll. So that's going to be five damage to your location of six. Oh, right in the right arm, and it lapped. So taking out the right. And then the left, sort of like edges. Extra shot because he doesn't have the focus to put it out. So that should end his activation. Yes. So he's Coleman. going to chill over behind his warjack here. And he's going to throw a... Uh, he's going to try and shoot his disrupt. He's going to check his control range. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, okay. So he's going to shoot oh, his gonna disrupt him. disruptor pistol at the big jack. Makes sense. Now, he's under protection of Minoth, which means he does have uh, plus two defense. So he is defense 12 as well. And goes to 12, an armor 20. 
If you hit me, I lose all my focus points, and I can't yeah, be outside like, focus point point It's 21 right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm not good. Even boosted damage is going to stick. But it does keep me from running him or doing anything yeah. fancy the next turn. So I will... Does it get rid of uh, upkeeps on him? No. Okay. Not, that's like a bless, I think, or something. Sweet. I, have, I do have that. <laughs> I do have a ability to get rid of upkeeps. Yeah. Uh, See a six to hit. Always where I struggle with this game. Do I boost or do I not? And I always make the mistake. <laughs> when you think when you think you should, you should probably. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it because I want this to happen. So okay. it does not mess my day up. You got it. Looking for a six. Dangle it. Probably day. good thing we did. Mm -hmm. That's a hit. Um, and then I'm disrupted, so no focus for him next turn, and he loses any focus he has. Not that he has any. Um, you know, I'm gonna like one focus isn't gonna make the difference probably. Well, you can also in vulnerability after this if you want to That's, get I plus five armor because this is probably the turn. Yeah. Because if you're in my feet range, then this is yep. the turn I try and kill you probably. Yep. So we will be. Uh, what's your thing? You do knockdown and everybody. Everybody's knocked down, yeah. Oh, that just like totally messes up my total plan for this turn. I mean, you're still going to have your... Well, I mean, he'll be out of it, and you're still going to have your... Um, your whatchamacallit. You're still going to have your invulnerability, your feet. Your feet won't go away. Yeah, no, no. I just realized like what else I was going to do for my turn for just general. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, 21 minus 10... That's like probably a uh, zero. 10, 20 total, it's nothing. That's all right. He's out of the fight for this turn, okay? And you're in a feat, so everyone's plus five to armor right now. So everybody's very hard to hurt. Uh, so we're going to move the ironclad in the way of people <laughs> Killing directly them. charging onto <laughs> yep, me. Makes sense. And then the Lancer is going to use his focus to run and jam everybody engage up. Engage everybody. Up. Oh, look at that. Smart. Um, and if I beat on this guy, I get tons of uh, damage back to my cortex. It does. It does block my charge if that happens. Remember, if I knock you down, though, it doesn't matter. You're not engaging me anymore. Yeah, I know. So I'm just trying it to does mean Kreos will, so will have to go first. Will have to have trouble hitting me with him. Yeah, it means Kreos will have to go first, and I'd have to knock you down. Right. Well, so here's the problem I've now been presented. I have a bunch of things in the way of my assassination run. I have a charger or a lancer, sorry, up my grill. He's gonna burn the brains out of anybody who starts wailing on him, which sucks unless I break his shield immediately. I wonder if I can arm lock him and that gets rid of his shield. <laughs> uh, I need a, uh, sorry, I can't actually because I need a focus to do it and I can't allocate focus to the Crusader this turn. So I think I want to give, so I'm going to upkeep, I think upkeeping protection, I mean, it doesn't make any sense anymore. I need to focus. Lamentation. I think I keep that. I think I keep that and go to six. It's worth, it's worth keeping the pressure on Lamentation, I think. I'm gonna assign one here to you, because that way you can, you have powerful charge and your charge attack would be boosted. We do free you up to charge over Coleman and you'll be automatically hitting anyway because you'd be knocked down. And then I think we give one to you to boost the damage roll on the Flamer, potentially. That gives us two, two bolts, potentially, to, to do other things with, so. There we have it. We have the run. I've got four with Lamentation on Krios. I've got one on each of the lights, and then this guy's just derping along, <laughs> being, a, being a heavy that can't do much right now. So we're going to start with him. He's just going to walk over, and he's going to hit you so bad. <laughs> Your defense 13. I'm only mat 5. So this is like you living on a prayer. I just walked. Yeah, I can't charge because I'm a focus. So uh, you don't get to set defense against him, but you do get the just being depth 13. I have to hard roll an 8 just to hit you. Ha! I did with an 11. Okay, then. Boom. But, uh, uh, no boosting damage, so that'll be the column. And then I'm pow 18, which I think is just a straight dice roll now. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to get a cortex burn from this no matter what I do. 10 to the 2. Holy moly. Ouch. I remember loving these dice. So burns a point of my cortex out. I hit you with the hand. Make you taste the ring finger. <laughs> all right, so this is also going to need an eight. No, that's a six. That one's going to miss. Well, that's all done. Uh, I think we kind of have to go with Krios now. The problem is I don't want to go with Krios. I really want to knock something down first, but I got to try and kill Coleman this turn or it's going get, to gonna get spicy. You're also armor, what, 17 right now? No, 18? No, he's 20 right now. He's, oh, he's well, it doesn't matter. You're going to flatten my defense to five. I know. Well, the armor, it, the defense doesn't matter, it's the armor, yeah, I'm worried about. I guess I could wait a turn. I think I'm going to have to, and wait till you don't have uh, the, the, the other stuff, the invulnerability. So we're going to go with the Revenger, and he's just going to... I can't charge you because you're engaging me, so he's just going to go into melee. So he's got melee of his shield as well. Okay. He's going to stab you with his halberd. 
Uh, he'll boost the attack roll, because actually, no, we're gonna boost the repulsor, because I'll get it. Oh, no, you have reach, doesn't even matter. Yeah, we'll just boost the halberd. So, boosting the halberd to hit with three dice. We're looking at mat five for an eight. Nope, that's a seven. Uh, we'll go with the shield, not boosted. That one hits, that's handy. Uh, so it is damage nine, so minus nine. Oh, do we get anything? Zero to the four. Nine But it does nine repel you. Nine, so it's nine plus nine is eighteen matches my armor. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't do anything. So repel if the revenger hits with the repulsor shield, or if the revenger is hit with a melee weapon, its opponent is pushed back an inch. So you are pushed directly back one inch. So to oh. there. I'm okay with that. Boop. And that means I think we go with the repenter. He's engaged, so he can't fire his flamethrower. So he's just gonna walk over and hit you with the flail. Did you take your? You take a cortex damage. That's right. To my. I forgot how much I like Lancers. Revenge. Oh yeah, Lancers are great. They're super trolly in the Battle Box game too. So he needs to hit you with a War Flail now. Uh, he is map five, so he'll boost his attack with his one uh, focus to hit on an eight. Gets you, uh, has critical nothing. So it's just POW 13. So dice minus five. Yeah. See if we get something. Two to, to the five. So he gets his Cortex burned. Except Krios, yeah. <laughs> so he can't see you though is the problem because there's nobody, everyone's in the way. So I think he's not going to be able to charge, he's going to walk. So he's going to walk into engagement range. So he got the reachy. He does have reach on his big boy. And he's going to smack you. I do have a mat of seven, which means I will hit seven. you on a six. six. Got it with yeah. an 11. Uh, and then I will boost the damage roll, because why not? You can't burn my Cortex. So, losing a focus for that. Making count. And he is power plus strength 14. Uh, so that's minus four, so two to the six. Oh no. Buy another attack, and try and hit on a six again, which he does, and then he'll boost it down to one. How much damage you got left? A bunch? Yeah, fair amount. You're close to taking out some systems, though. Well, I've done five to the two. Moving out, your defense becomes ten. So I'm going to buy one more and go to zero, which is bad. And we're going to hit you on a, anything, because it's a three now. And I can't boost the damage, though. It's minus four. I don't think I kill you. I do two to the six. I lose nothing. Thought I was about you, but no. <laughs> well, <laughs> I got the important stuff. You I did. Brain did, I break your, did I break your shield? I, yeah, I didn't no. break your shield, because you lose the shield armor if I did. Damn. The shield's got two hit points left, basically. Oh, so close. All right, well, that's my turn. So Lamentation's still up, which is good. So we still double everything. And we're on a turn, uh, bottom of three. Say goodbye to this. Say goodbye to Snipes. You got your six focus then. Six focus. Um... Sure. <laughs> yeah, Virgo. Three to the charger. Oh, it's guns o'clock. And uh, it's double to cast, too. Yeah. yeah okay. So, so no earthquakes. <laughs> you can walk up and do your star attack, though, potentially with the ironclad and knock down everybody. I was just thinking if I could throw my armor back out on yeah. someone. But I think earthquake affects your lancer, too, though. Yeah. But he could get up afterwards, maybe. I'm not concerned about yeah. your lancer. Oh, he's going big because he's got two functional arms. Yeah. Look at him. You don't have to play the game I was going to play. <laughs> I could just stab you with the Lancer and stuff. Do the Ironclad. Oh, I keep nothing. Oh, so and, uh, generous. Yeah, it's going to be a... This is a This bold is the turn. Move. This is a bold move. Bold yeah. play, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off. Yeah, this is like a plan with kind of a really bad backup plan. <laughs> okay, I like it. Um, I know all of this. Okay, let's go. All right, who's going first? Uh, the Charger is going to... No. The Lance is going to go first. Right? Okay. Let's just try and make what I want to have happen first. Sweet. So he's going to just keep on jamming his junk up in here. Okay. Keeping everybody's melee. I'm just going to do the all reverse. Yeah, yeah. Back in. And then back his front. Got it. Yeah. And we're going to uh, shield punch this dude in the face. Oh, right in the cortex. Ten now, which oh, means man. you hit him on a five. Only not five. I know, but I'm only have ten. No, so I'm just not used to one of these things on six, and it's like what? <laughs> Everything's worse. Got me. Oh, that's fine. It's an Eleven. That's a hit, and uh, the damage is pretty bad. So we're just gonna roll. He's damaged. Armor eighteen. So dice off. Minus nine. Okay. 
I'll do the math after. Whoa, 10 one point. plus 9 is 19. So one point to the... Oh, no, it's zero points, actually. Sorry, he's armor 19. Oh. But I lose my Cortex yeah. point, which is the important thing. Now, does it disrupt or just burn my Cortex? Shock shield. Yeah, I got it. Okay, just burns the Cortex. Yeah. Against uh, Mr. Krios. Spirit attack Mr. Krios. I'm going to boost the attack roll. Because what's your defense? Uh, my defense on Krios is 14. Yeah, that's definitely warranting a boost. Because we need a 9. Boop. Boost the dice roll. Get some of the 10. Bam. And I'm armor 15. I more attacks as opposed to straight attacks. damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Boost attack roll. So All it's right. uh, minus 2. Minus 2 the roll. Five. five. Well, I've got probably, 18, so that's pretty good. Him, so buy and boost another one. Hit on a nine. Oh no, an eight. Short. Missed. There she goes. Ironclad o clock, I guess. Uh, pretty, pretty much. Um, yeah, because the charger can't really do anything else right Until now. Until everyone's knocked down. Yeah, so he's gonna. Lurk. No, so Ironclad is going to charge this. What's his defense? His defense is, he has powerful charge, not set defense. He's defense 12. We're just going to charge him. Okay. I should just walk. So you go straight in and then face his middle. And then you're going to make your star attack. Uh, or you're going to make a regular attack. I'm actually going to jam dudes up big time here and mess okay. you up from being able to do anything later. Sounds good. Uh, You're going to do a big one with the first hit though, remember, because he has a repulsor shield. So it's going to knock you into melee as soon as you hit him. We'll be boosting the attack roll also. Might as well. It's automatically boosted for damage because he charged. Uh, six plus Got him. critical. Yep, so he's knocked down. Knocked down. So I'll, give, I'll use my own knockdown token for that. Bam. And 18 plus... Uh, so 18 plus 7 is 25. 25. His armor is 19, so that's going to be 6 points of damage six to, the to the 2. two. So 6 to the 2 will take up part of his left and his movement. Knock you back an inch. So once again, whoa, to there. Heavies only have a half inch melee range in first edition War Machine, so the, the repulsor shield actually meant something. <laughs> to just kind of lurk in this direction. Bodyguard Coleman. Mm, not exactly. Uh, Hang out, not take a shot because everyone's engaged. Yep. And then Coleman is going to run behind this forest. Oh. Like it. Moving away. All right. Well, we are, are not disrupted, which is nice. So that means that we can allocate everybody focus. We do have a knockdown Revenger, though. Well, unfortunately, if I finish off this Lancer with the. Uh, Ironclad, he's going to lose his Cortex, which is not good. So I think we have to start with Krios. So Krios is going to keep up keeping Lamentation, so it's going to give him six. He's going to hang on to four, and he's going to give out, I think, two to the Crusader. We'll start with Krios, and he's going to try and kill this guy before he burns out everybody's Cortexes. So just a standard attack. You are movement broken, which I think reduces your defense to seven. Hit on kind of anything, which I do. Uh, and then, do I boost the damage or do I just take it at dice off four? I'm gonna take it at dice off four. So two to the six. Shield is gone, fantastic. We will buy an attack, so your armor's down to what now? Uh, 16? 16. So buying attack, hitting on anything again. And then dice off two this time. I should be able to finish you off. Seven to the five, I think that does That's it. Enough. So he becomes a wreck. So you remove his model, and I'll use one of my wreck markers here, but you're basically a pile of arms and legs. And the important thing here is I reduce my own movement walking through it. The news is I'm not engaged anymore. So how do I want to handle that? <laughs> that is going to be the question. I think I go with you, and you're going to stand up for one. Am I done with Krios? I need, don't need to, I need to figure out if I'm actually finished with him. He hasn't cast any spells yet, which I could do because he would have an arc node over there. So I think I'm going to throw protection of Menoth on the big guy again for two and then just camp one. So now we go with, how do I want to feat this turn? If I feat this turn, there's a possibility I engage Coleman 
and I kill this <laughs> ironclad. God, it's so tempting. I will feed this turn. He's inside 14, which means we'll knock you down. We will knock you down and we'll knock down Coleman. I'll be done. So let's do it. Let's go with the uh, let's go with the Revenger. <laughs> He's gonna stand up and forfeit his combat action. Mm -hmm. It's so tempting. Before he can't run. Now he'll forfeit his movement just to stand up. Now he'll forfeit his combat action. And he'll just move. He's gonna go walk. Now he can walk. It's gonna be difficult terrain, so he can walk two, uh, like one and a half to here. And then he'll have uh, like three inches left basically, which will move him like an inch and a half. So he's just gonna go to there. Make a hole for the big boy and he's gonna walk. He'll just walk over to the Ironclad and start swinging. And he'll be auto hitting because of his uh, being knocked down. So auto hitting, uh, I think I still roll to see if I crit fire you. I don't double. Uh, and then pow 18, what's the armor of the Ironclad? 18, it's just straight dice here. So the first hit, eight to the one. Oof, hand, my good weapon. oh no, the hand is pow plus strength 11. So it'll auto hit, but I'll be minus seven to the roll. Uh, three to the three. Buy a mace attack. It does four to the six. And I'll buy a mace attack. It does three to the six. I jacked him up a little bit, but not enough, I don't think. He can still punch people in the face. Yeah, he's still pretty pretty ready to, to hammer f people's faces off. And that means I need to go in with the repenter as well and gang up. And we're just going to hit you with the flail automatically at POW 13. So just one hit, minus five, one to the three. Now at least you broke your legs. Uh, and that is my turn, your turn four. Six focus, I am however standing in the wind against that charger. Yeah, so he's definitely getting three focus. That makes sense. Uh, and I can see if I just stand up, that's yep. great. And then I have three focus and I'm just gonna leave on him. I think, uh, should I give it to my friend, the Ironclad, to do things with? Yeah, and I hope I don't get loose if you do. Pretty much, like, you're I'm not going to on the charger that, run. Yeah. That's fair. So he's going to stand up by sacrificing his movement. Okay, so no aim bonus, yeah. but you are standing now. So we're going to powerful attack boost. Yep. So the core attack right now is going to be boosted for both attack and damage. I'm deaf 14, armor 15. Nine. So nine on three dice. Cranks it. That'll do it. And then I'm armor 16 because I am camping one focus right now. Minus four. Ooh. Good job. Holy moly. That's so that's 15, 11 so. damage. Yes. That's a lot. Quite got me, but it's a lot. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two left. Oh, you got to hit me with this right. next one. Right. This is it. This is for all the marbles. Buy and boost. Get it done, son. And nine? Oh. No, six! I you thought that was going to roll off, but I got a reroll. No. <laughs> I got two health left. Oh, I got to okay. seal the deal well, this turn then. Wow. Your control, so you can see if this is six inches across, which I think it, it is. is. Yeah, yeah. It. We got it. So you can, you're going to walk in three. Yeah. So you can see through it three. Yeah. We're going to buy a shot against Krios with the D pistol. Well, you get, a, you, get a, you get a free shot, right? This is your combat action now. Sorry. Oh, no, you stood up. You actually do have to buy a shot because oh. you. Actually, you can't because you forfeit your combat action right. to stand up. So you can't do this because when you forfeit your combat action, you can't buy more. Yeah, it's one or the other. Yeah, it'll be one or the other. Oh, I'm so lucky I knocked you down. Okay. <laughs> so, new plan. Um, and you're so you can forfeit your combat action and cast a spell at me, though. But it'd be double cost. It'd be I something that costs. Yeah, I don't it. have enough. Well, I mean, if you forfeit your combat action, you could walk in and still cast magic. But Lamentation, I think, really, is going to keep you yeah, from doing that anyway. That yeah, you need four focus to cast something. Um, damn, this always happens. I know! It was I mean, you did everything right, too. It was just the dice. 
Give me that. Yeah, you got a four. Because you have to four, but I think your only option was to cast spells and Lamentations keep me safe. I just right think now. I could run around the forest, but I can't run. You can't run because you have to four for your combat action and all you can do is walk. Yeah, because you're knocked Stupid down. Stupid Lamentation. <laughs> Get up. Shoot him. Shoot the Revenger? Yeah. Okay. With a regular shot. So I got concealment, so I'm death 14 right now. I'm also in melee. Oh, no, I'm not in melee because you're knocked down. Yeah. Yeah, so you're good. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take a pot shot, and if I disrupt him, cool, and if not, also cool. Sweet. Uh, rat six, you have eight. Hey! Nope. No. That's Disrupting is, it would have gotten rid of my arc node, too, which is cool. I'm pretty sure. My and iron clack is, like, is going to He gets to stand up. Uh, stand up. Excuse and me. And smash somebody. And punch the, uh, who's, like, looking very punchable. I uh, that light war jack with the stupid flamethrower. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> Um, because I just can punch you. I can't really. Well, I can try and hit you with the hammer too. I will try and hit the big. He's got the protection on me off though now. He does. It? He's death twelve right now. Yeah, so, armor twenty one. So we're gonna just yeah, we're gonna go all against the stupid little guy. Against the revenger. This this one. Oh, they're Penter. That makes sense because he doesn't push you back. Yeah. Okay. Death twelve. Uh, fisting. Six plus the dice. Five no, misses. And then so now we'll try and hit you with a hammer. One. No, no. That's fine. I One dice because your that. system's crippled there. Yes. It looks like you're four, so it's my five. And I gotta figure out a way to do this. I'm going to upkeep both these spells, which will put me on four focus. Five focus. Five focus, that's right. Thank you. Uh, and then I gotta allocate some. Now, you can actually heal your power field in this game by spending focus. But I don't know if that's better than just trying to kill you right now. So I think what we do is we put three on... Uh, how many boxes does the Iron Cloud have left? Not many. Uh, uh, he's got a decent ten. amount, I think. I think we have to kill you with the with the big guy. So we're going to put two on him. We're going to keep three on Krios. And that's it. Let's go with um, the Crusader first. He's going to hit you with his hammer. Hitting on... That will do. Is it? That's an 11, 12, no. 11. 11 doesn't make it. 12 needs to be. Needs to be 12. If your movement's out? Oh, right. I forgot yeah. my movement's out. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, ah, I'm good defense. <laughs> it's just straight dice. Seven to the five. Two with a hand, uh, which does. Seven plus six plus five is 12. Uh, only armor or strength 11 on this one. So that's minus seven. One point to the five. It's left. Buy an attack with the uh, mace. And hit with an eight plus five is thirteen, and then five to the six. He is now dead. He's a wreck. All right, he becomes a wreck marker as well, and these guys are no longer engaged. Well, all right, we need to make the chimichangas, so we're gonna go with you, Mister Guy, and you're just gonna walk two and a half inches so that we can stab you with a a, a big poker stick. Uh, I'm only deaf or mat five, so I think I need a nine to hit you, 11s to hit you, deaf 16. 10, that's close. 16, that's pretty legit. Um, and then the Repenter goes? No. Yes, I think he does. The Repenter's just going to advance and hit this guy with a flail. Mat five, needs an eight. No. Importantly, you're engaged. All right, we need to not die. And that's the priority here. So how are we going to do that? Well, first things first. I think we're going to cast Immolation. It only costs two, so we're going to cast it, and we're going to boost it onto you, him through the Arc Node. Can you do that while you're engaged? So you're not engaging me. But you're engaged. I, I can do it while I'm engaging you. I can't you do it. Sure? I'm pretty sure. If I'm So I can't actually channel it, because if you're engaged by me, I count as being in melee. So, hmm, I guess we just camp our focus, <laughs> camp our two and one and hang on to three. And then we move, oh, you know what? No, we're gonna spend three to heal and go up to five left because you can replenish your power field in this. And then I'm gonna walk into cover and behind my warjack. My turn five. All right, I'm going to give three to the charger. Okay. So you're gonna take a free strike? Yep. All right, so free strikes, plus two to my melee, 
and it's considered a back strike. Uh, nine plus seven is 16, so I hit you. Yep. The damage rolls automatically boosted, power 13, what's his armor? 16? Uh, 16. So minus three. Oh. Ooh, 14, so 11 to the four. Not the worst, not the best, but you got me. And now you can start blasting. I do have cover though from the wreckage. My death currently with cover is gonna be 18. Okay, so, so I need 13 to hit. 13 to hit on three dice. You can do this. So powerful shot. 13s. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. He just missed. 12. It. No. I saw I'm the three and I was Try like, again. Oh, yeah. oh, you can yeah, still yeah, do yeah. it. You can still do it. Buy a shot rate of fire two. Needs that 13. He. Oh, yeah, with a 14. Okay, so he hit me, but I don't think the damage rolls boosted now, is it? It is. Powerful shot. Oh, because it's still a powerful shot, because you do it for both. Okay, because it's not an action. Got it. And you're at just armor 14. Armor 15. 15. Minus 3. I need a 5 minus to kill two. me. 8 will kill me. Ooh, Sorry, curling. You got it. Yes. There you go. That's going to be a 11 minus 3 is uh, 8. Five left. Krios is down, so that means the remaining battle group goes inert. And Coleman manages to walk away with it. Oh, look at that! With one jack left, he squeaked it out against the uh, the, the legend that oh. is Krios. Just control range. I know. Well, I mean, and that's the that's what he's got going from this. He's mostly a ranged assassination caster in this edition, especially in the beginning. He likes a redeemer that he can just pop rockets through that are boosted by the yeah. choir. Um, but out of the battle box, you still get a pretty compelling game. And oh, yeah. back in 2002, 2003, there wasn't anything like this. This felt like playing a game of Magic the Gathering with miniatures, which, I mean, you're talking about the contemporary box set for 40K being the third edition box set. So we're talking dark, Plastic Dark Eldar and Plastic Space Marines. No, I don't think going into, no, no, going into Battle McCrag. Oh, So okay. Battle, oh, Battle yeah, McCrag yeah, was the box after that. So I, was Mark II, I was a Mark II guy. That's right. So yeah, Mark, Mark I is 2002, 2003. The pre-release is in 2002, and then it fully launches at Gen Con 2003. And there's, there's really no game like this. You got a really compelling experience out of the box set. There's not much more... Like, when you play a 500 point game, which is standard size, you have to think that this battle group is 300. So you're getting like a couple units and a solo. You're not getting many more models, maybe eight to 10 more models in the game. So I would have like choir, maybe some, uh, uh, what should I call it? Um, spear guys, some flame guard, temple flame guard, and then something like a redeemer, maybe another heavy. Uh, the repenter might get swapped out for the redeemer. And then maybe some solos like the Paladin of the Wall, uh, because that's what's available I in the first edition box set. Yeah, or Eris, the Mage Hunter. She was available in the, the original rulebook too. So in Mark I, core out of the rulebook, there's not much more between a duel and a rumble. And a rumble is the 500 point game level, and you'll see us play that one next. So we got a look at War Machine Mark I ending an assassination kill for Signar as they managed to finally take down with their guns um, the, uh, the Menoth Warcaster Krios without actually taking any damage there's um their actual warcaster but losing two of their jacks in the process so big thanks for watching of course if you do want to check out the gmg review of the rulebook it'll still be up here in the cards it's like tom ash hey there i hope you enjoyed that video there are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos i guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Game of Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.